The Apollo Hospitals in Chennai has performed the first double lung transplant amid the pandemic. During the pandemic, a patient from Ahmedabad is now doing well after the transplant. Also, another patient who was on ECMO support for 46 days has a new lease of life after the transplant. Joining us now, Dr. Paul Ramesh Tangaraj, the transplant surgeon. Doctor, thank you very much for your time. Let's talk about the first patient. How important is this? At uh, the very beginning of the pandemic, uh, there was a closure because people were not sure about the transmission and the infectivity of COVID. So Transtan had decided, which is the Tamil Nadu regulatory body, not to do any transplants. They did lift this uh, restriction sometime in June, July. And th this patient was the first patient in India to undergo a double lung transplant during this uh, pandemic. And as such, his uh, experience and our experience with him taught us uh, quite a lot about safety measures. He was not COVID positive. He was tested for COVID at the original hospital in Gujarat, but he was found to be negative uh, when he came to us. And what are the challenges? What kind of precautions doctors take for these kind of surgeries? Yes. In spite of uh, any patient being COVID negative, as you know, with the swab, there is still a one third chance that it might be positive. So we tend to uh, take utmost care for all of these patients, uh, whether they're COVID positive or not. Very specifically, during the COVID, we have divided the uh, zones in our hospital into transplant zones in which the staff, the doctors, even the people who clean the, uh, the uh, rooms and the wards, are isolated from the main hospital uh, where there are COVID patients. Uh, this, I think, is a very important aspect to maintain that these patients don't get infected as they are immunosuppressed and at very high risk. And risk for doctors as well? Yes, there is risk for doctors, the nurses looking after them, the technicians involved, specifically anesthetists. So there is a high risk for all of the people involved uh, in the care of these patients. How do you address that? Um, uh, we take the utmost care. Uh, obviously, we uh, uh, ensure that not too many people are uh, in the vicinity of the patient. And the patient themselves, after they have had their operation, go into an isolated area where only the nurse is looking after them and all of the monitors are isolated and even the relatives are not allowed to go in. And even the doctors, unless they actually have to examine the patient, uh, do not actually go in to see the patient. So we minimize the amount of contact. That's the best precaution we have. Doctor, does lung transplant offer a new hope for COVID patients? Yes. Uh, uh, patients who do have COVID, a small percentage of them can end up with fibrosis of the lung. Uh, now, fibrosis of the lung has many different reasons. COVID is now one of the most recent diseases that causes them. And if they do fulfill criteria whereby the fibrosis is irreversible and the lung is the only organ affected and they are shown to be absolutely negative in terms of any residual infection, then they can be considered for lung transplantation. So every COVID patient with a damaged lung cannot really be a fit candidate for uh lung transplant? Uh, that's a good question. Not every person who has COVID needs a lung transplant. Not every person with COVID with damaged lungs will require a transplant. For example, the level of damage may be enough for them to have compatible with a reasonable quality of life. So only when patients are suffering disability uh, from the fibrosis or the damage to their lungs, they will uh, be candidates for lung transplantation. Right. And in terms of availability, does it jump the cube? ahead of people who are already on the, I mean, waiting for... Yes. So there's a question whether these patients should be given some priority uh, because of COVID. And the answer is no, because there are a lot of other sufferers who are not COVID who have been on the list before them. And hence, I don't think they do require it any more than any other people. And in right. fact, because of the number of organs being less, the patients who are on the list tend to deteriorate fast or sorry, sorry tend to deteriorate and may require a lung transplant as much as anybody even with COVID. So I don't think this actually grants them any special status. And what will be the average lifespan or expectancy for these patients who get new lungs? Usually, a person who is a candidate for lung transplant has a life expectancy that is measured in months or a few years. For example, most of the patients in India go on the list have a 80% chance of dying within a year and almost 100% chance of dying within two years. Uh, or their quality of life is so poor that they require a lung transplant. In these patients, when you transplant the lungs, you can expect 
a survival of about 70% at five years and about 50 to 60% at 10 years sometimes going down to 30% at 10 years, depending on the actual reason. There are very different reasons. So if you have uh, certain kinds of uh, etiologies or causes, they tend to uh, live shorter lifespan with lung transplants. But that's kind of the average, about a 50% chance of surviving five years and about 30% to 40% chance of surviving 10 years. And how do you decide a patient requires a transplant? Yes. Uh, it is a fairly nuanced uh, decision. By and large, we go by symptoms. So these are patients who have had all the medical therapies available, uh, have been exhausted, and yet they are not able to do the daily activities. And we're talking about people who cannot really brush their teeth or even uh, like walk inside the room. They get breathless. They're continually on oxygen. This is the group of patients that we consider for lung transplant. Now, even while they're on this, they may sometimes end up on the ventilator or further on the ECMO and they are considered patients of very high risk for dying and they also would benefit if an organ comes in time. You also had a lung transplant for a patient who was on ECMO support for 46 days, which you say the longest uh, in India. What's the challenge in this? Uh, in general patients, uh, we've done a, a series of patients uh, who have required uh, ECMO. So this, these are patients who are unable to breathe by themselves at all. And they require this machine, which is basically an oxygenator. So it kind of gives, delivers oxygen to the blood and removes carbon dioxide. They require the services of this machine 24 seven in order to just survive. And the only way we can get them off this machine is to do a transplant. And this is called a bridge to lung transplant. The challenges are that the ECMO machine itself is a double-edged weapon. For example, it can cause uh, bleeding and it can be a source of infection. And if it breaks down, the patient can arrest. So a lot of these patients have to be monitored very minutely, literally almost minute to minute. Uh, it has the services of an uh, interdisciplinary team with a lot of technical support. But the, these group of patients, if they get a lung in time, this is their only chance of surviving. Right. And how was the availability situation in terms of lungs? You get only from brain dead patients. What's the scene here? Yes. Uh, we do uh, lung transplants only from cadaver donors, which are brain dead patients. Um, and the uh, number of organs uh, obviously are far fewer compared to the number of people who do require the uh, transplant. It is especially in COVID times because of a variety of reasons, you know, the lockdown, the lack of movement, the rest of it. The number of organs have come down compared to the pre-COVID times. And the cost? The cost uh, depends on whether it's a single uh, uh, lung or a double lung. In general, the, a double lung, which is uncomplicated, would cost around about 40 to 45 lakhs. Um, uh, for the patient, including the donor operation, the post-op care until discharge. How do you respond to the perception this is also big business for hospitals? Yes, yes, I think that is a, a, not a, a correct perception because these are very labor intensive. Uh, there is a lot of investment in infrastructure and technology. It is also uh, sucks up a lot of nurses and technicians who could be uh, you know, used in other places. So therefore, the investment from the hospital side also, there is quite a lot of investment. And uh, doctors who generally tend to perform uh, uh, lung transplants and heart transplants and ECMO are a dedicated uh, group that don't really do routine stuff. Right. Uh, so which also means that uh, there are lots of factors which make the cost go up. So. And doctor, personally, what what kind of precautions you take at home when you travel outside? Yes. Uh, obviously, when I come from work, I have wash and keep myself isolated as much as I can. Um, it is very difficult for doctors to lead a normal life. Uh, we ensure that even the slightest symptoms in our team, they immediately undergo a test and they're removed from uh, right. looking after these patients. Um, in our own uh, group, we have three very senior surgeons, all of whom can do transplants. So even if one of them has looked after a COVID patient or has to go for ECMO or COVID patients, they take themselves uh, out so that the other two can look after the patient. So that's, that's how we make sure that we don't end up infecting the patient. And lastly, when you realize this surgery was successful, what's the kind of joy, the feeling in your team? Not just this operation, but any operation makes us very joyful. I mean, most of the time, when when the patient does well, we're extremely happy. As, and the other end of it also, when they don't do well, we feel extremely depressed. It is very nice to see these patients who are in such hopeless condition, uh, getting up, walking, interacting with their family. That really is a, a great joy.
Thank you so much, Doctor, for your time. That was Doctor Paul Ramesh Tangaraj. Yet another first in Chennai, or for Chennai, as Tamil Nadu is being seen as the capital for organ transplant. Certainly, new possibilities, new hope, particularly in this pandemic time. In Chennai, with camera person Edwin, Sam Daniel, Findy TV.